Hello class. Welcome to week four. You've made it so far. You are over halfway through. Good job. So um, the theme for week four is who is the we in we the people? What does that mean? We'll talk about it as we go. So in this PowerPoint and video, we're going to do a little bit of looking ahead to SA2. We're going to talk about the week four assignments, do a little bit of review, and then that'll bring us to our theme of who is the we in we the people. Uh, so here we go. Your SA2 assignment is coming up. Um, SA2 covers weeks three and four of our class. And the question asks you to put into conversation with one another primary sources and secondary sources as sources of information about the past. So what I've done for you here is listed which primary sources you've read in weeks three and four or will be reading and which secondary sources you will be reading in weeks three and four. Um, so. Here is the essay question, and the question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using primary source material to learn about the past? Some items for you to consider as you think about that question. Um, what are some other ways we learn about the past? Secondary sources are another way, for example, videos, etc. Museums might be a way we learn about the past. What is important to learn about the past and what is maybe less important? What types of sources help us learn and what do we learn from them? How are secondary sources better or worse for helping us learn about the past than primary sources? Uh, how else can we learn about the past and what are the advantages and disadvantages of those types of information? So just some things to think about as you complete your readings for week four and start thinking about that essay too. Your week four assignments, you have your uh, reading outline for, which that's Zen chapter six and seven, and um, most, not all, of we'll see chapter two. I should have put here too, you have a discussion for assignment two. Yes, you do. And then for Journal 4, um, I'm going to talk to you more about that toward the end of this video. But the theme of Journal 4 is who is the we and we the people. You're going to read two primary sources, one by Abigail Adams, one by Frederick Douglass, and then a secondary source by historian Henry Louis Gates. So, before we, so we're going to talk about um, this theme of who is the we and we the people. But before we do that, I'm going to do a little bit of review for you. I have a lot of slides here. I'm going to go through them briefly, but I wanted to keep them on here for your, your reference. So just a reminder, for week one, we talked about history and how we remember history. In week two, we talked about American exceptionalism and um, historians' interpretations of the past. And so just to remind you, actually, it's on the next slide. Um, American exceptionalism is the sort of idea that's pretty deeply embedded in our culture that the United States is somehow exceptional, unique. That could be in a good way, it could be in a bad way. I think mostly in our culture we see that sort of in a good way. The U.S. is the best nation in the world, stuff like that. So I'm not really saying that's true or not true. I'm just more calling that to your attention as an assumption that we sort of tend to make in the United States that I think colors a lot of how we look at the past. Uh, something else we've talked about is historiography. So I'm sure you've already gleaned that Howard Zinn has a very different take on the past than uh, sort of that high standard of American exceptionalism that uh, John Wilsey writes about. So that's some stuff we've already talked a lot about. We've also covered the concept of primary sources, which are documents from the time period being studied, first-hand accounts. 
in, in week three, you read a historiography article about the American Revolution, and um, we sort of talked about the idea that the revolution, even today, is quite often used as a political weapon. So that has brought us through the colonial era and the revolutionary period. Um, and last time, and the time before that, we talked a little bit about some of what actually happened in that colonial era. Just a reminder, the colonies really existed to be exploited in an exploitative relationship with the mother country. That exploitation is what helped lead to the American Revolution. Something we talked about in week three is that after the revolution, the sort of really difficult work of establishing and administering a republic started. Uh, things weren't going super well, which is why the Constitutional Convention was held in 1787. Um, the Constitution was ratified a couple of years later, and something I talked to you about last week was the idea that the Constitution itself is a, really a series of compromises. And one of the ones we talked about, which is relevant for this week, is the Three-Fifths Compromise, which said that slavery was legal, slavery was part of the Constitution, and in the Three-Fifths Compromise, slaves counted as three-fifths of a person for the purpose of establishing a state's population. For the purpose of establishing a state's population. For your journal in week three, you read about George Washington and Ona Judge. Um, so Ona Judge was a slave who belonged to Martha Washington. And sort of continuing to grapple with this question of how can we reconcile the founding fathers sort of continual demands for liberty and their continual statements that the United States was a nation founded in liberty with the fact that many of them were at the very same time withholding liberty from people. So that brings me to our theme for this week, which is who is the we in we the people? The phrase we the people comes from the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. And so here's the Here's the full preamble. We, the people of the United States of America, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. FYI, I got this from the website that I've listed here. Uh, which has so much information about the Constitution. If you want to find out more, you can look at it there. But I'm just having you notice that when the Founding Fathers got together, here's, here's the picture of that again, they got together in Philadelphia, 1787, and they're like, ooh, our first stab at a republic maybe isn't going so well. We, we need to do better. This is how they framed it. This is that we, the people of the United States, are doing this. So um, my question for this week is, who is the we in that we, the people? Just to remind you, here's our timeline. So we're sort of here. We're in the early national period in 1787 with the framing of that constitution. But week four takes us all the way really through the 18 period 1800 to 1820s. That's sort of what we sometimes call the era of Jeffersonian Republicanism, named after the most prominent president of that era, Thomas Jefferson. Then into the era of Jacksonian democracy, which is the 1830s and 40s, again named after Andrew Jackson, one of the most prominent presidents of that time period. So here's what you're reading for your reading outline four. And just to sort of clarify for you, Howard Zinn, in chapter six, he goes all the way back to the 1600s and then forward to the 19th century. The 19th century is the 1800s. And that's because chapter six is a chapter about women's history in the United States in that time period. So don't, don't let that confuse or frustrate you. Remember, you're reading for the concepts, you're reading for the answers to the questions in the reading outline. 
but Howard's Inn is sort of um, all over the map in chapter six in terms of time periods and when he's covering. Chapter seven is much more focused in terms of its time period. That's about the so-called Indian removal time period. You'll read all about it in Zen. Here's a picture of Tecumseh, who was one of the Native Americans prominently featured in chapter seven, who he actually pretty prominent figure in some resistance by Native Americans to the United States, some military resistance. And I just want you to notice in this picture of him here, here he is with his medal around his neck that Thomas Jefferson gave to him. So he didn't really start off as an enemy of the United States, but over time, um, I think he would probably argue the United States became his enemy. So when we think about the we and we the people, did the Founding Fathers include Native Americans when they thought of that phrase, we the people of the United States of America? Uh, maybe not. I think we would today. So that's something to consider and think about. And, and what about women? Did they include women when they thought about we the people of the United States of America? I mean, I think we today would all say women are citizens of the United States of America. I'm a woman. I like to vote. I'm excited about that. But how did that work in the past? Um, then you're going to read Wilsey, pages 64 through 82, where he's talking about the Mexican-American War at first, and then he actually goes backwards to discuss the late 1700s and the first half of the 1800s sort of that Western expansion story, which Zen starts talking about in chapter seven, and then he'll talk more about it next week. So here's a small map um, that talks about the Western, uh, the territorial growth of the United States is how Wilsey puts it. And on this PowerPoint, I've included a bigger version of that map for you. You can also just Google for yourselves, Western expansion of the United States or something like that to get this same map. <clears throat> So today's, uh, this week's theme is who is the we in we the people. And uh, this slide is all about journal four. So you're gonna be reading two primary sources um, written at different times, I want you to note. Um, actually, I'm gonna write here that this one was 1776, yes. And what to the slave of the 4th is the 4th of July. That's from 1852. So I want you to notice that these are written decades apart from one another. But they're both primary sources in which different people are dealing with the legacies of the revolution. Abigail Adams was writing to her husband, John Adams, who later became the second president of the United States, asking, where do women fit in, in this new republic that you're founding? And then Frederick Douglass, decades later, is talking about why the 4th of July might not be so meaningful for slaves in the year 1852. Your secondary source for Journal 4 is um, an article by the historian Henry Louis Gates asking, did African-American slaves rebel? You know, if, if liberty is important to everybody, which I think it is, why would African-American slaves not have rebelled? Is a question I get a lot. So that's why I've assigned this reading. But I really think it fits into this general theme of who gets to be inside this pronoun we in American history and when and why. And that should lead you right into thinking about essay two. I just want to remind you I'm really looking for your critical thinking, your interpretation, not just of what happened, but of how different kinds of sources can help us understand what happened. All right, thanks for listening. Uh, never hesitate to contact me. You can send me a message on Canvas or email me. Uh, thanks so much for your participation and hard work in the class.